Arteria pigments is a class of synthesizer I refer to as mega synth because it incorporates a lot of different types of synthesis. It has several uh, options and filters and effects and lots of modulations and a lot of control. So it's really a sound designer's dream. For the case of uh, someone working with MPE, it's great because you can really sort of get into the meat of how all the different gestures on a keyboard or on your controller can affect like different types of synthesis. So if you want to work with, um, for example, uh, so analog style synths and almost create like an MPE Moog, you can do that because you can use analog modeled waveforms and analog modeled filters. Uh, if you want to get really digital and experimental, you can do that too with samplers uh, and wavetables. Uh, and then within the sampler, you can use granular synthesis. So there's a, really a lot of opportunity for finding out um, all the options for applying gestures to sound. So what I'm going to do in this video is just kind of give you an overview of pigments and how it's laid out. And then we're going to figure out how to apply some of the MPE gestures and set it up so that we can start start that experiment. Um, so in the case of Bitwig Studio, uh, in your track with pigments, you'll want to make sure that you click on the device and have MPE uh, on. And then once in pigments, um, you can select your presets by going to the library. This is a very standard format for all the Arturia products. So it's nicely laid out with um, a lot of different tags and options. Um, and uh, in this case, I'm using a vocal synth. And I've also found that pigments, a lot of the presets do incorporate MPE just sort of by nature. So. So you can hear we're sort of changing the, the timbre just by sliding up and down. And of course, you've got your pitch bend and pressure in this case. Uh, probably is not really applied to anything. Um, it, is a, it does appear to be applied to a function rate. And that function is applied to a volume on filter one. So it's pretty slight. Um, but so taking a look at the um, layout of pigments, we see we have our two synthesis engines and we have our options as we showed before. Um, and then we have filters over here and we can turn them on and off and mix our filters from each engine. And then in the middle, we have all of our modulation options and that's how we do our routing of uh, keyboard and LFO and envelopes and things like that to the parameters up here. Uh, there's also an effects tab and a sequencer and arpeggiator. So you can almost use this as a composition environment too. Um, so within the synth, uh, let's take a look at how we can get our MPE X, Y, and Z and map them to different um, parameters. So in this case, we want to go to our modulators and we'll go to um, the aftertouch and we'll want to map pressure to something. Um, since it's a vocal synth, I'm going to try playing with the formants and I'm going to apply the pressure and, and just once I activate the modulation, I can just drag on these edges and apply the amount. So now we've very, very much uh, changed how it reacts to playing. And almost given it an underwater, underwater feeling. Um, so that's pressure. And as you can see, it's very easy to apply. And when you want to m sort of modify how much you've applied, you can use these number boxes to really dial it in. And if you want to set an offset, you can do that just by making sure you're over the knob area and you can set your offset, your beginning point. And, and we can uh, really dial in our sound design that way. Um, now, if we want to apply the vertical to something, um, it doesn't, you don't see a CC74 or a vertical MPE. 
this is just something you have to know. It goes to macro one. So now we'll experiment with applying the vertical gesture to some parameters. In this case, I want to try playing with the granular synthesis of engine two. So I've turned off engine one and bypassed the filter for now. Uh, so now we're actively able to map macro one to uh, different parameters. And uh, I want to try playing with some of the density and time parameters. So as I increase up here, and I'll need to turn on granular synthesis. So I go to sort of a broken sound. To a fuller sound. And then I'm also going to add some pitch variation and uh, start variation. And now we almost create sort of a, a Georgie Ligeti going on the vertical. And of course, once we incorporate our filter, it gets pretty unchained. So now we have our pressure and our um, vertical value. Uh, now with the X value, that is going to be fixed to pitch. And as far as I can tell, there's not a way to really use that pitch bend value uh, to uh, modify different sounds. Uh, so that's, I guess, kind of a limitation that we find in Arturia pigments. I'd love to be uh, told wrong on that and uh, find out that there's a given that X option. So that's just a couple, that's just really like a quick overview. You can, you know, add synthesis engines and try wavetables and uh, work with, you know, different types of waveforms, match that vertical value to um, the wave scanning or distortion in this case, that's kind of expressive. So then I'll go ahead and play with that. So quickly we're getting into uncharted territories and we've only just poked around a little bit. So as you can see, Arturia Pigments is pretty powerful when it comes to uh, MPE and working with uh, synthesizers and filters and trying to get the, the most out of your fingers into the patch. Another cool thing you can do with MPE is play with time, not just timbre. So using the arpeggiator and pigments, we can use the vertical gesture to change the rate of an arpeggiator. And we can also use it to change the filter of the sound. So we're affecting timbre. And then we can also add effects. Um, so the synth has a send level that we can use to uh, send the voice to the send effects. And I'll turn on the tape echo. And this is going to give us an opportunity to play with the rhythm of the delay and the rhythm of the arpeggiator. So let's take a listen to that. So those are a few examples of the spectrum you can explore in Arturia Pigments. I'm looking forward to seeing what you folks produce.